Sunday Roundtable is ready to go. Joining us this morning are Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh and Republican political analyst Rob Gray. Happy Sunday, guys. Let, let's start with Monica Tibbetts Nutt, who was, who was in the chair this morning. Transportation is a hot button topic here in Massachusetts, right? You can talk about it all the time, anytime. Governor Maura Healey has been on the job more than a year. She's on her second transportation secretary. And as we've said, we talk about the MBTA pretty much every newscast every week right here at News Center 5. So how is the governor doing so far addressing these issues, Marianne? Well, first, I wanted to know who the guy is that she sees every day eating cereal when he's driving into work. <laughs> I want to know who that person is. And I did ask her, but she had no answer. Um, look, compare, look at how bad everything is. So the bar's pretty low, but Monica has planes, trains, automobiles, ferries, the highways, and the registry of motor vehicles. But I think the real key here is how she works with filling. And that's the, the key to all of the transportation stuff. Yes, the T is a big issue. We talk about it every week, but there's more to transportation across Massachusetts right. than just the T. Right. And I think they're really tackling things that have been ignored for decades well, and they will do better. To as that result. point, she talked glowingly about working with filling. Well, you know, you can talk glowingly about working and then still solving problems is something else. Sure. I mean, you have to. Something is going to pop up on the T. It's like it's like right. an old house, right? Something is always going wrong with the T. So she has to have that relationship. She has a tough job. I mean, that Clearly, the administration is making progress on the Cape Cod bridges and on straightening the pike in Alston. But at the same time, there's a lot of other crumbling bridges and infrastructure around the state mm -hmm. not being funded. Well, mm -hmm. and those two projects come with multi-billion dollar price tags. And I, I found it interesting she did not rule out implementing tolls on the Cape Cod bridges to pay for them and potentially raising tolls on the Mass Pike to pay for that big project and the other ones that the pike needs. Well, this is a show about politics, right? <laughs> it would not be a great political decision right. to put tolls on a new bridge to, to the Cape, but for should, sure. Should Cape residents have a stake in paying for them, Marianne? Well, first of all, you have to replace those two bridges because they're about to go on the Cape Cod Canal, which is not comforting as somebody who drives over them regularly. And when you look at the pike, as I, you know, look, I grew up in Western Mass. I know all the tolls. I know all the roads. No one, to Rob's point, would be happy about it. That was the smart answer. But in the end, if they're short of revenue to try to get these things done, if you can't get them from Washington, it's got to come. Yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm old enough to remember that the, the promise when they built the Mike was that, oh, we're only going to have the tolls up until it's paid for. Well, okay, when, when, that's got to be done by now. I think every tolling authority right. in the country right. said that, right? It's got to be right. done by now. All right, to the election. Last week, Donald Trump's candidate won the Republican Senate primary in Ohio. Former car dealer Bernie Moreno will run against Democrat Sherrod Brown in November. Democrats actually, in the last couple of weeks of this race, ran ads for Moreno, thinking he is less electable in the fall, which would help Sherrod Brown. Are Democrats playing with fire here by pushing more extreme candidates up? This is a state that sent J.D. Vance to the United States Senate, who probably is the most right-wing member. Right. I mean, they're, they're trying to throw a lifeline to Senator Sherrod Brown, who's most likely going to lose even to this Trump candidate. Remember, Trump won Ohio by eight points. Ohio is not a purple state anymore. There are probably six states that are going to decide this election. Ohio's not one of them. Does uh, Brown have a chance in the fall, Marianne? He gets reelected, and here's why. The fact is, Moreno is the weakest of the three Republicans who ran, so it was smart to put him up. Number two, Ohio passed not one, but two constitutional amendment ballot questions to keep abortion in Ohio. When you look at the results from those two ballot races, Trump counties that he won in 2020, they all voted for abortion. Moreno, like Trump, wants a na nationwide abortion ban. No exceptions, no anything. That's the one. But winning it's not issue. showing up in the presidential polls in Ohio. Nobody's saying Biden's getting close. So I, you, you, I mean, you, you may be right, but it's not showing up in the polls. You think people will ticket split? They'll vote for Trump at the top of the ticket and they'll vote for Sherrod Brown? It's, it's possible, but I think Sherrod Brown wins that state and wins re-election on abortion alone. Ticket right. splitting's on the decline. Yeah. Let, 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 let's, let's continue the conversation about the, about the race for the White House. New filing show that President Biden's financial lead on that front itself is growing. And then on the other hand, it also shows that Donald Trump's legal bills are rising. So, Marianne, what, what, what impact or does it even have an impact on each candidate's chances in November? A, a big impact. And let's let's talk about why. First of all, just for comparison sake, mm -hmm. Nikki Haley has more money left in her presidential campaign account yeah. than the RNC has. Yeah. So that tells you everything. The big trouble sign for Trump is he's losing his grassroots donors. Is it because they're going, that money is going to pay his legal bills? I don't know. But when you lose grassroots donors who keep the lights on, all the overhead paid off and all that, that's bad enough. But it shows you're going to lose their vote, too, because low donors are votes. And that's bad for Trump. Right. I, I think the money is a concern for Trump. But there's there's other good news. I mean, Biden arguably had a pretty good state of the 
of the union, uh, supposedly had a few good weeks, and yet you see polling this week that Trump is ahead in Michigan and tied in Pennsylvania. So Trump has resilience. I think he'll be able to raise the money, but, but he, it is a danger sign. But, but Biden's got more money than anyone has ever raised before. He will use it. It's all being raised by Massachusetts own Rufus Gifford, who's running all of that. He will have the money to put the infrastructure together, the organization, the People ads, know these everything. guys really well. I don't think the money's going to be decisive, but we'll see. All right, see the Supreme September. Court last week let a Texas law go into effect, empowering the state to arrest people who enter the country, the state in that case, illegally. It was then put back on hold by an appeals court pending further review and argument. Just a decade ago, the Supreme Court said the federal government is the exclusive, has the exclusive power over immigration. Of course, a lot can change in a decade. We have a much different court, a different decision. What's the end game for the court here, Marianne? I think it shows you just how political the Supreme Court has become in its decisions because the law is the law. If you apply the law to any case, you're going to come out with the original decision, but not for this court, not for the justices on it. And now you know why it's the least respected biggest drop in polling institution of government ever in the history of the United States. Rob? Well, I, I think the Supreme Court is Sphinx-like, um, so it, it's hard to say how they came down in this way, but uh, immigration itself, it, it is the number one issue right now. We'll see if it remains and, that way and, in the And fall. to that point, how big of a vulnerability does the migrant issue continue to be for Democrats? Well, I think it's major. I mean, so 28 percent say it's the most important mm -hmm. problem facing mm -hmm. the country, number one issue by far. That being said, Republicans missed the boat by going along with Donald Trump and, and, and instead of saying yes to Democrats' willingness to fix the problem, they said no to it. So now they have some responsibility there, whereas it would have been a clear shot at Biden previously. Some you meant to say Republicans. I know you did. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's really a problem for them. I mean, they refused to put it on the House floor for a vote, and it came over from the Senate bipartisan, seventy votes. When was the last time you saw seventy votes for anything but, out of the right, Senate? Right. And they didn't do it. But so hang the it blame on, on Biden is baked in. So yeah. it, it's going to be the the blame on Biden's baked in. It's going to be hard to get by that. I think Republicans bear responsibility here. I'm not sure the public yeah, does. It's you, not the first issue. It's not the number one could issue. Could you get 70 votes to agree that today is Sunday? I, I'm not sure that Unclear. you could. Unclear.